Against the sparkling background, the letters A, C, B. Below each letter is its corresponding braille cell. Year in review. Outdoors and from below, a sculpture of the Greek Titan Atlas holding an orb-like representation of the heavens on his shoulders. A facade in neon, rainbow room, observation deck, NBC Studios. 2022 Audio Description Awards Gala. Presented by American Council of the Blind. Ewan McGregor. Audio description is near and dear to me for one very special reason. My mum, Carol McGregor. She's an audio describer. Audio description allows people who are blind or visually impaired to enjoy the visual imagery of the same movies that most of us take for granted via a secondary audio track that describes the action on the screen. People who are blind or visually impaired can participate in films and television broadcasts in a very fulfilling way. My mum's been working with audio description for decades, not only in cinema, but also for live theatre. She's empowered the inner visions of countless blind and partially sighted audiences. In particular, we believe that it's important that young visually impaired people be able to go to the cinema with their friends, join in the conversation and know all about the films of the day. She and I both are so supportive of the American Council of the Blind's audio description project and all it does to further the field of audio description in the States and worldwide. Stevie Wonder. Good evening, everyone. Our last award tonight speaks to my own heart. Seven years ago, during the 2015 Grammy Awards, I made a very special call to action that we should all work to make sure that everything that's accessible for all people with disabilities. Since the Grammys first broadcast in 1959, performers have taken the stage year after year, painting a musical tapestry drawn by notes that would capture the rhythmic pulse of generation after generation. Their performances have been amazing spectacles of artistic beauty mixed with bold statements, but until this past year, their sights and sounds fell flat to audience members who have no sight of their own. Tonight's final Barry Award recipient moved music's greatest spectacle forward this year when it filled in that space between the notes with audio description. CBS Paramount has long shown a commitment to inclusive media through captioning and audio description, but they took the extra step this past year with the Grammy Awards. And that step means so much for those of us who know firsthand there's so much more taking place on stage than just the music. Clark Rockful. Many of our members in the, the blindness community as a whole have been getting very excited uh, this summer because as uh, a new addition to our you know, solar system and universe exploration has been unveiled, the James Webb Space Telescope. These images are coming to us with some amazing descriptions and alt text that really brings the images to life, not only for people who are blind, uh, but the, the rest of the population as well. Even sighted people can now understand what exactly am I looking at here? Claire Blum. Basically, when I think about writing alt text, what I like to do is set the broad scene. It's like I'm painting a picture all across, you know, left to right, top to bottom. Um, what literally does this scene contain? So I want to, I want to paint broad strokes, right? I'm orienting people. And then once I've oriented someone with a brief sentence, two sentences, then I can start to go into what are the areas of interest? Why are we releasing this image? What is the scientific discovery? So then I might draw attention um, to, let's say, the star that's cast off its layers of gas and dust, but pointing out that the star is this tiny white you know, blob at the center, um, and then all the layers that, you know, in one case, it looks like a butterfly, and knowing that we can say it looks like a butterfly, not necessarily because people have seen it, but they might have touched it or experienced the shape. So then they can start to build a mental model of what this scene looks like. Chantelle Zuzi. I would say um, my personal experience led to my deep desire to become involved with human rights. At my birth, I was denied basic human rights and justice. 
I was born an albino in a community where albinos are viewed as outcast. And the only reason I survived was because my parents believed I had the right to leave. So I would love to bring justice back to those who are going through different situations and around the world. Hello, everyone. This is Senator Tammy Duckworth. For so many, the pandemic underscored how critically important website accessibility is. Nearly everyone at one point or another can recall a time when they relied on the internet to, to order home goods, connect with loved ones, or to work from home. And yet too many websites and apps remain nearly impossible to use by Americans with vision disabilities. I'm proud to have worked with American Council of the Blind to introduce legislation last year that would build on the promise of the ADA and finally make websites and software applications more accessible for all users. This is Dan Spoon, the Interim Executive Director for the American Council of the Blind. And it's really wonderful to be here today to celebrate Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Clark, it really is important to our community of blind and low vision individuals. It absolutely is, Dan. We've been celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day for more than a decade now. And this is really a great opportunity to increase awareness, not only among our members and people who are blind and low vision, but all of you out there, uh, raising awareness of the importance of accessibility for people with disabilities. That is what Global Accessibility Awareness Day is all about. And here we are using technology, accessible technology, Dan, to share this message with the rest of the world. Your ACB leadership team just came back from a meeting at the U.S. Treasury with the Deputy Staff Director for Janet Yellen for the U.S. Treasury and the Director of the Bureau of Printing and Engraving, Len Uliar. He's been in that position for nine years. We had a meeting with him today where for the first time, whoo, it's going to choke me up a little. For the first time, five blind people got to actually touch the raised tactile features on a real $10 note. Colby Garrison at the rally. What? A logo, ACB, in print and braille, American Council of the Blind, together for a bright future.